السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والمؤمنون والمؤمنات بعضهم أولياء بعض يأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر ويقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة ويطيعون الله ورسوله أولئك سيرحمهم الله إن الله عزيز حكيم وعد الله المؤمنين والمؤمنات جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها ومساكن طيبة ورضوان من الله أكبر ذلك هو الفوز العظيم صدق الله العظيم In these ayahs of Surah At-Tawbah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the importance of having true Islamic brotherhood where we have people that would help us practice the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have friends that would remind us when we forget and when we remember they help us do what is good. And when it's time for ibadah, we get together to do the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When one of us makes mistakes, commits sins, we help him to come back to the right track. This is the type of friendship that every Muslim needs. And subhanAllah, sometimes the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presents the message and when we look at it from that angle, it's so amazing that you just sit and keep on thinking about it, that this is for my benefit. This is only so that I won't make mistakes. And I'm getting rewards for doing this too. Now when look, we look at this ayah of Quran al-Kareem of Surah Al-Tawbah, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ Mu'min men and mu'min women, they are the friends of each other. Men are friends of men and women are friends of women. Look at the word wilaya, that they are close friends of each other. Wilaya is also used for helpers. They are the helpers of each other. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in another ayah of Quran al-Kareem, that the true wilayah, the true friendship for believers has to be with those that practice the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that they can help them practice this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَتَّخِذُوا الْيَهُودَ وَالنَّصَارَىٰ أَوْلِيَاءَ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُمْ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ 
Some people get upset about this ayah and similar ayahs. That how come Quran says no wilayah with disbelievers? Quran is not recommending to be bad with those people, to behave in immoral ways. All Quran is saying that, that you need helpers that can help you, you need friends that can support you, practice the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person who does not believe in your salah, how can he help you do your salah? It's very simple. Then when it comes to deen, our wilaya, our friendship would be with those who would support us, practice the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like when a person is at work, you would choose the type of companions, friends at work that would help you perform better. Those are the best friends over there. So when it comes to deen, the best friends are those who would help you practice deen in a better way. There is nothing to object and nothing to get upset about. For a person who is practicing the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is looking forward to be a better believer, and he finds himself every some time he makes some mistakes. He slips off the track. He misses a prayer. He misses Quran. So he gets to in the company of people who normally do salah together. He stays around those who would help him stay strongly on the hold strongly to the deen. So of course this is only because he's trying to be a better believer. And in fact this is the only way that he would be able to improve his deen and iman. There is no other way. And look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, in this ayah of Quran. The people of Iman, men and women, they are the helpers and the friends of each other. They enjoying good. They remind each other of doing good. I didn't see you in the masjid for last two, three days. What happened? Are you okay, inshallah? You want me to call you tomorrow at Fajr time? If you are not able to wake up? Ya'muruna bil ma'roof. We got together and we were doing some ta'leem, we were learning some deen, we were reciting Quran together. And we hope that inshallah you can join us for this gathering also. It's very beneficial. We learn Quran, alhamdulillah. We recite Quran together. Ya'muruna bil ma'roof. They enjoin good. Wayanhawna anil munkar. And they forbid each other from evils. That I heard that your nights are being spent in haram. So I don't think this is good. Inshallah, you need to think about stop doing these type of things. I heard that you are about to get in a deal that involves riba, interest. This is a big sin. I don't think you should get into something like this. You can't afford it. I see all of these CDs and uh, cassettes or whatever of music in your car. Brother, I don't think this is nice. This is good. This is haram. Why don't I get you some other CDs that you will listen to that will have something better for better than what... Uh, what you have been hearing here. So, yanhawna anil munkar. They stop each other from falling into evils, from committing sins, from disobeying Allah. وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ Subhanallah. And they perform salah. When it's time for salah, okay, let's go for salah. Let's do salah together. وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ and they pay the zakah, remind each other, when is your year ends? Instead of asking, when is your birthday? When is your zakah due? And by the way, if you know about anyone, to, uh, if, if it's your time for zakah, I, have, I know a brother, I know a sister, I know a family, I know a widow, I know an orphan, who really needs your zakah. So inshallah, let me know, I will guide you to that person. Subhanallah. We tune a zakah, they help each other. This is the type of awliya they are. This is the type of friends they are. And in general, وَيُطِيعُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ
they obey Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what their friendship is for. What a beautiful company. And what a beautiful solution to all of our problems. We don't realize it. As human beings, we sometimes don't realize the beautiful advices that Rabbul Alameen is giving us. Just like a child, you give him some advice and he feels that this is, some, this is nothing. I'll do whenever I want. This, these things I can get them any time. But do it and you'll see the benefit of it. Maybe small things, but have great benefits behind it. Great effect in doing these small things. But they don't realize and they don't, they don't want to do it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the reward of it. Subhanallah. When you have this type of company, يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ وَيُطِيعُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهِ What do they get? Subhanallah. أُولَٰئِكَ سَيَرْحَمُهُمُ اللَّهِ These are the people that surely soon Allah will have mercy on them. Allah will have rahmah on these people. On the day of judgment when they are presented to Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if they are there with loads of sins, with their records full of sins, but, Ya Allah, this is what the company that I used to associate with, these are the type of people that I used to stay around and hang out with these people because they were good believers, I thought they are good Muslims and this is uh, why I was staying with these people, we were helping each other, but still, Ya Allah, it was my mistake, I would go back home, I would fall into the sin again, but when I would go back to these people, then we will help each other, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't worry, say, Arhamuhum Allah, Allah will have rahmah on you. What a beautiful way of holding to the deen and getting, to the, getting the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we look at ourselves, our situation at this time, we will realize that majority of us, we don't have these type of friends. Our friends are those, when they see us doing something wrong, they will start talking to people about our faults. This is the type of friends we have. That every person is trying to look at the faults of others. They are not willing to help each other. They are looking at the faults of others. He doesn't even pray. And especially, may Allah forbid and protect me from saying something that is incorrect, but unfortunately when we see amongst those who are considered to be religious people, this problem gets even worse. That we start looking at people's faults. Oh, they, they don't pray. So just put them, leave them alone. Don't talk to them. These people, they listen to music. So we don't want to talk to them. These people, they come with this haram. So this is why we are not going to even say salam to them. This is totally wrong. يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ is part of our deen that we advise people. We talk to people. And when people are committing sins, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're harming no one but themselves. ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ They're doing wrong to themselves. When they're doing wrong to themselves, we help them come out of those situations. It's not that we push them further. They will say, okay, these people who are considered to be religious, they don't even want to talk to us. Okay, we'll keep on doing what we are doing. It's our responsibility that we try to hold these people from falling into adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us of the best type of company we can have. وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ Number one, people of Iman. Number two, Choose them as your friends, and then these are the qualities that we need amongst our friends. Amongst the group of people that we associate with. That's يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ If we have friends that will okay everything that we are doing. You do haram, you commit sin, you don't do anything about related to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they don't care about you. They don't care about if you perform salah, if you recite Quran, if you, do the, if you follow the sharia, if you... Uh, if you go against this, uh, the deen of Allah, billah, you are committing sin openly, they don't care about you. What type of friends are they? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we need the type of friends that will help us practice the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that will help us 
follow the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the type of company where when we are we always get together for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a beginning point to having this type of company and developing that as we call it islamic brotherhood allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says innama al mu'minuna ikhwa all muslims are brothers but that brotherhood is gone we don't have those brothers that will be our brothers because we are the people of iman that would be our brothers because they want our help and they want to help us to practice the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Without that type of brotherhood, it becomes impossible for a person to practice the deen properly. If we think that I'm going to just do, I will let everyone mind his own business, I'll mind my business. And we see what happened to us as an ummah, that everyone is falling into sins. Everyone is totally away from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our gatherings are full of sins. Even when we get together, our gatherings are full of haram. The gatherings are not for the sake of Allah. Brotherhood is not for the sake of Allah. Our love for each other is not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For personal things. Everything, whatever we are doing, when we smile to others, when we call others, when we invite others, when we participate in other people's functions, it's all just formalities and it's just for worldly benefit. It's not for the sake of Allah. That Islamic brotherhood, the concept of Islamic brotherhood is totally gone. If it is for the sake of Allah, it has to be solely and only because this person is a believer. It's not because if I don't attend his janazah, his relatives will mind it. No, I see a janazah of a person where there are only four people to carry the janazah, three people to carry janazah. Okay, let me join this janazah because they would really appreciate someone to be with them and they will need someone to be with them. So only because this person believes in Allah and in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was a mu'min. As a beginning point to this, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us how to develop that brotherhood. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says you need to do six things. To develop the Islamic Brotherhood and then it will go further and it can increase to the limit where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in the hadith that those who would have their brotherhood for the sake of Allah and only for the sake of Allah they get together only for that and when they are separated they're separated because of that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says on the day of judgment there will be under the arsh of Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. In one of the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, يَغْبِطُهُمُ الْأَنْبِيَاءُ وَالصَّالِحُونَ Even the Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam would envy those people because of the place they have under, under the arsh. This is the true brotherhood. But the beginning points, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us how to start it. حَقُّ الْمُسْلِمِ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِ سَتْمِ There are six rights. For every Muslim or other Muslims. Number one, إِذَا لَقِيتَهُ فَسَلِّمْ عَلَيْهِ Say salam whenever you see a Muslim. At this time, I'm only trying to introduce the hadith without going into details. Whenever we see a Muslim, we need to say salam to this person because this person is a Muslim. Not because I know the person. Not because he helped me once. Not because... He is a friend of my father. No, إِذَا لَقِيتَهُ فَسَلِّمْ عَلَيْهِ Say salam just because he is a believer, he is a mu'min. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ مِنَ الشَّرَاتُ السَّاعَةِ أَنْ يَكُونَ السَّلَامُ بِالْمَعْرِفَةِ That it's one of the signs of the qiyamah, of the day of judgment, that people will say salam to only those that they recognize and they know. Salam is only according to ma'rifah, according to how much you know the person. Inshallah, some other time we'll go into the details of this right and of adab of the salam. Sometime we are upset, we turn our face away. Someone says salam, we don't respond to their salam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِذَا لَقِيتَهُ فَسَلِّمْ عَلَيْهِ Say salam to him when you see the Muslim brother. وَإِذَا اسْتَنْصَحَكَ فَانْصَحْ لَهُ Number two, when he, asked you for a, when he asks you for an advice, advise him. 
Give him the right advice. Now don't look at your benefit there. That I have to say things that would make him happy at this time. I know this is what he likes to hear. So I'll tell him this. Although you know that this thing will be harmful to him. But you give him that advice only so that he is happy with you. In fact, sometime a person comes and says, you know, I went to these this, such and such brothers and I told them my situation and they told me to do this. Do you think, do you expect me to do something like this? And now after hearing this, you know that this is the best advice for him. He has to do this. But you tell him, yeah, I don't know. I think you, you can think about doing the other thing. This is, you are not being a true believer. You are not being sincere with, this, with your Muslim brother. You are breaking the Islamic brotherhood. As part of our Islamic brotherhood, give him the right nasiha, whatever you feel is right, then whether he practices it, it follows it or not, that's up to him. But you give him the right advice, whatever you feel is right. Even if it turns, say there is a situation where if he would accept that advice, it is going to be against you. But this is nasiha for a moment that I have to give him the right advice. I can't break that rule of Islamic brotherhood. Oh, it's going to harm my, harm my family. If I tell him this, then it's going to harm my place or my organization or my situation. You give him the right advice. When he asks you for advice, then you have to give him the right advice. Advice is an amana, is a trust. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sometime he took special bay'ah, special bay'ah from some sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een, that you will be a well-wisher for every Muslim and you will do the best for every Muslim. Number three. When he invites you, accept his invitation. This is also haq al-Muslim. It's not that we are ignoring every person. I'm not going to accept anyone's invitation. But on the other hand, most of the time, as our invitations also are not because of the Islamic Brotherhood. They are not based on that Brotherhood. It's only formality. If I won't invite him, he will get upset. I need to advise him because he's a president, he's this, he's a secretary, he's imam, he's shia. If I, won't, I advise other pe- if I invite other people and I don't invite him, then he will get upset and other people will get upset. And most of the time it's just formalities. I just want to, I have to advi- uh, invite him. Of course, this is not the type of invitation that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is talking about. He's talking about the invitation that is based on Islamic brotherhood. The person invites you because he likes you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as I said, we are not going into the details of these rules and adab of everything. It's just to remind ourselves of the basics of it. And inshallah, if time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow us, in further in next sessions we'll go into more details of these akhlaq and these adab. And unfortunately, one of the situations nowadays, you invite people and you know that we would like people to come at 8 o'clock and we tell everyone to come 6 o'clock. Why are we saying 6 o'clock? Because we know everyone will come late. Unfortunate, very unfortunate situation. Now how about people who really came at 6 o'clock? And they do. There are people who would come on time. From 6 o'clock till 8, 9 o'clock, they will have to wait for all the other people to come and then they will get their food. So they waited 2-3 hours for nothing. And most of our, when we are inviting others, it takes 5-6 hours. 8 hours is our full day of work. Five, six hours, a person is just sitting there for one meal, doing what? This time, of course, is going totally useless. Yes, except if the person really enjoys sitting there and talking, and that is most of the time we know the type of conversation we get into. But the fact is there that we cannot waste everyone's time just like this. So, da'wah, when we invite people, everything has to be according to the deen, within the limits of the sharia of Islam. Keep the person who's inviting and the person who's invited. They both have to keep these adab of the sharia in mind. Number four. When he sneezes and he says, Alhamdulillah, then you should... 
respond to him by saying, Yarhamukallah. There is also the rights of other Muslims. Most of us are ashamed to say Alhamdulillah. Believe me, people are ashamed to say Alhamdulillah. And when someone says Alhamdulillah, the others, even family members, brothers and sisters sitting together, no one wants to say Alhamdulillah. They are shy to say Alhamdulillah. And many times, in our gatherings, there's only Muslims around, and the person will say, excuse me. For what? Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, thank me. And we are asking people to forgive you, excuse me. Number five. Number, uh, number five. وَإِذَا مَرِضَ فَعُدْهُ When he gets sick, visit him. And then there are adab of ayada. Why do we visit the person? What's the benefit of visiting the person? What should we say to the person? What type of dua should we make for this person when we are visiting the person? And number six. وَإِذَا, مريض, وإذا مَاتَ uh, and when he dies, then follow his janazah, go with his janazah, go with his burial. When a person dies, of course, that is the time when he really needs people to come and make dua for him. That is the real time when this person needs our duas and our prayers. And if that brotherhood, if, if Islamic brotherhood was there, people would go and make dua for him. If this person had no Islamic known as Muslim brothers. Islamic brotherhood was not there, and we know it. When that Islamic brotherhood is not there, then even those friends that would come to Janazah, they don't even know how to perform Salatul Janazah. Most of the people that will attend the Janazah, they don't know how to do the Janazah. And the people who are coming to the graveyard, just after burial, during burial, they're talking about their own businesses, about their own dunya. No one is with sincerity is making dua for this person. No one cares about this person's punishment or adab, anything he goes through, who cares? No one even knows what to recite at this time, what to do at this time, so that this person's questioning will become easy for him. Because we never had those type of friends in our lives. All our friends were those that we will watch movies together, we will smoke together, we will go outing together, and that's all that we were doing together. Other than that, we don't know each other. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is giving us these steps. Take these six steps in your life where you have these type of friends where, by which you start developing the Muslim brotherhood. Al-mu'minuna wal-mu'minatu ba'duhum awliya'u ba'd. Now again, look at this beautiful ayah. Mu'mins, men and women, they are the friends and the helpers, helpers of each other. يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ They enjoin good. They always remind each other of doing good. وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ And they prevent each other from doing evils and sinning and disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ They together establish salah. وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ And they pay zakah. And they help each other paying zakah. And help the, as put our zakah in the right places. وَيُطِيعُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ And their friendship is because they obey Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أُولَٰئِكَ سَيَرْحَمُهُمُ اللَّهِ These are the people that soon Allah will have mercy on all of them. May Allah make all of us amongst those people that will have the rahmah and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِلِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَانِ الْحَمْد